Okay, so let's talk about the examination of the shoulder joint now. Complaints the patient can come to you with and all the steps of examination that you have to see. So what I have done in this section is we have taken a subject on which I have tried to show you how different things are done in shoulder. Because shoulder cases are usually not given to us in our exams. So I have taken a normal person here. A normal uh, person has been subjected and shown you here all the different lines and angles and whatever is required in the shoulder. Let's have a look for the case that you will need to uh, you know present how the patient comes to you what you have to tell the examiner and how you have to elicit it okay so special feature of the shoulder joint you know that the shoulder joint is made up of basically two you can uh, say the joints one primary joint is what you call the glenohumeral joint between the glenoid and the humerus the humeral head and second one is the scapulothoracic joint between the medial margin of the scapula and the rib on the back side that's what you call the scapulothoracic joint okay special point about the shoulder joint is that the dislocations are very very common in the shoulder joint reason is very simple that the size of the head of humerus is much bigger as compared to the size of the socket unlike your head of femur and the acetabulum in which the head is inside the socket here what happens it is just articulating and therefore there is mismatch and so they dislocate very very commonly okay that is one of the reason why shoulder joint dislocate so often so commonly as compared to the rest of the joints okay what are the problems with which the patient can come to you let's have a look and what are the different steps in the which we have to see the examination of the shoulder have a look now number one like any other case any other joint any other subject first of all the first thing to be done is a proper history taking as i always say proper history taking sorts most of the things and can give you the clinical diagnosis maybe the probable diagnosis or the differential diagnosis at least in 70 to 80 percent of cases hardly 20 percent is required to just go for examination and see the or confirm the diagnosis okay second you should expose the shoulders properly preferably both the shoulders should be kept open so that you can compare them number third is about the inspection palpation movements measurements and special test whatever are related to the shoulder joint these are the seven steps under which you should always go for the examination of the shoulder right now as i said in the history what all the patient can come to you with the patient can tell you i am having pain simply ask him that what was the onset and duration how what was its association with the fever okay association with the movement is the pain radiating somewhere or are there some aggravating or relieving factors why because these every each and every point of mentioned over here is having a different meaning like if the onset and duration is acute it is usually seen in cases of trauma but had it been a chronic or subacute kind of lesion infections okay association with fever obviously tells you some kind of infective condition association with movement can give you a idea which probable group of muscle may be affected for example if the patient says i'm having problem in abduction so problem can be with supraspinatus can be with deltoid can be with trapezius or serratus isn't it patient says i have a problem with internal rotation so it can be with subscapularis which is written over here okay radiation is usually related to the cervical radiculopathy pain and you should always ask are there some aggravating or relieving factor right so is the movement or rest are they relieving because in cases of infective lesions even the pain will be present at rest also okay that is important thing so all the muscular related pain the uh, you know spasmodic pain will increase with movement but the foci which is in the bone will keep on paining even on movement or without movement right these are the important points second complaint the patient can tell you is some sort of swelling okay so ask him is it acute or gradual acute uh, swellings are seen with hematoma the blood getting accumulated related to your trauma fractures if it is a reactive kind of effusion it is seen in like synovitis or some kind of tuberculosis infective conditions okay stiffness patient says i am having shoulder joint which is not moving so just ask him are you not able to do a single movement or are you not able to do any movement that is global movement so as i said single movement will be related to particular muscle if problem is with abduction supraspinatus problem is with internal rotation then subscapularis problem is with external rotation teres minor or infraspinatus okay and if it is a global restriction can be a case of adhesive capsulitis frozen shoulder periarthritis that we have read in soft tissue conditions already okay other complaint with which the patient can come to you with is kind of instability patient says i was trying to you know lift some weight or suddenly i felt like my shoulder will just dislocate so i lift it 
Okay, I was playing cricket. I was trying to throw a ball and I felt my shoulder will dislocate. I throw the ball there only. I was not able to throw it to the wicket keeper or the bowler like that. So just ask him, is it, are you feeling the same thing in a single side or is it global, all the sides? Single side is usually a dislocation of that particular type like interior dislocation, inferior or posterior. If the patient says, I have got the problem instability in all the sides, probably something to do with the muscles. That means kind of neuromuscular involvement is quite possible. Okay. Second in the history, it is what the patient is coming to you with. Second is ask him past history of diabetes, hypertension, neurological disorder, etc. Any drugs he is taking, so and so. Everything is important because that gives you an idea. Like we read the posterior dislocation of the shoulder. We always say that it is more common in the epilepsy patients. Patient might be on anti-epileptic. Frozen shoulder, adhesive capsulitis are more common in diabetics. Patient might be diabetic. So every word gives you an idea. Every history, every point told by the patient gives you some idea. It gives you some direction in which we have to go. Number three is the exposure. As I said, preferable is always to expose both the shoulders so that we can compare them. Right? Number four is about the inspection. Okay? In inspection, what we are going to do? We will see the patient and the attitude in which he is keeping the limb. Okay? You will have an excess once in between these theoretical points like I am discussing right now with on PPT. Same time the patient will also be there. I have examined the patient and the video is incorporated here. You can see that. Okay. So if the patient is keeping the attitude close to the body or away from the body or it is away or it is dropping down. So what these suggest? These suggest if it is an abduction problem, it can be anterior dislocation. If the patient is keeping them close to the body and unable to move it, right, that can be adduction problem is related to posterior dislocation with neurological uh, involvement like deltoid paralysis there will be a drooping patient will have a droop of the shoulder down okay second is the contour of the shoulder normal or is it altered contour of the shoulder is usually lost in anterior and inferior dislocations but it can it can be involved in posterior dislocations okay it can be involved it can be maintained in posterior dislocations so do remember Maintenance of container of the shoulder is one of the very very important point about posterior dislocation. So anterior and inferior dislocation it can be, uh, it is usually distorted but in posterior one it is usually maintained. Reason we have already discussed with the shoulder dislocation. Any kind of swelling if you can feel, if it is a generalized swelling, compare the two shoulders if it is more thickened seems generalized swelling or a localized swelling because localized swelling will be kind of bursitis, dislocation but if it is generalized all around the shoulder it will be kind of effusion. Then is any kind of muscle wasting appreciable, visible? Is it because of muscle or is it because of nerve? If it is because of muscle can be a tear of rotator cuff. If it is because of nerve just see localized or generalized again. So that you have to assess. It is all inspection going on and last comment should be always on the skin over the shoulder whether the skin is fine or no. Right? Any kind of scar, any kind of sinus, any kind of previous surgery mark, anything abnormal that you can comment on will come at last in inspection. Okay? So this is all the, these are all the points that you have to see in inspection. Okay? What is palpation? Palpation is just confirmation of what you have seen in inspection. Okay, let's see on the patient also and let's see what we are doing in palpation also. In the case of palpation, what you have to do? Just confirm all the findings of inspection that you have seen. Okay, first of all, you have to see the local temperature. Local temperature, you have to see it here on the shoulder and compare it with the other shoulder. Then you start assessing the tenderness. It starts interiorly, then laterally, then posteriorly. Stepwise manner, it starts from the sternoclavicular joint, the sternum here and the clavicle here. So sternoclavicular joint, go to the clavicle, go to the AC joint, turn back on the acromion, spine of scapula, go down and then from the base of the neck, go towards the lateral side of the shoulder till the biceps area, bicepital tendinitis. That is anteriorly. Laterally, you will see for any kind of sulcus sign, if there is any kind of depression over here, which is a part of inferior dislocation. On the back side, you will see if there is any kind of swelling appreciable, Pulsation of axillary artery, if you can check, well and good. So that you have to see from posterior side. Have a look on the patient that I have incorporated here, how the tenderness has to be elicited, how the patient is seen. Okay. Movements of the shoulder, you will have to see both the movements, active as well as passive. Active movements, you ask the patient to perform all the movements, abduction, adduction, flexion, extension, external and internal rotation, and then you do it. Because when the patient is doing it, 
if it is a bony pathology, if it is a muscular pathology, if it is a neurological pathology, patient might not be able to do some of the movements. But if examiner is trying to do, there is no force from the patient. Only examiner is applying his own force. If the examiner also is not able to do, that means probably there is something wrong with the joint, something wrong with the contractures. So uh, the attendant, uh, the examiner also is not able to do for the patient. Okay. So active and passive, both the movements are very, very important. And for the passive movements, you must ask the patient to sit on a stool. He should be comfortable and examiner keeps one of the hand on the scapula and then he moves the shoulder because we have learned shoulder movements can occur at two places, scapulothoracic and glenohumeral. What I want to assess is a glenohumeral. Okay. So scapulothoracic movements are to be blocked. Okay. That is about the movements. Different movements done at the shoulder by different muscles are uh, posted here like the flexion, extension, adduction, abduction, external and interlocution and last circumduction. Circumduction is just like a round. You can make a round, big round from the shoulder. Okay. All the movements. Okay. So we have mentioned here all the primary and the supporting muscles from the shoulder area. Okay. How these are done in the patient? Have a look on that also. Then we move on to the measurements. Okay. Measurement, we have got three important things to be measured. One, length of the arm, circumference of the arm, and the interior and the posterior axillary folds. Now, why they are important? Length of the arm will tell you if there is any kind of overriding of the humerus, if there is any kind of malunion of humerus. So, arm will be shorter. How it is done? From the angle of acromion, which you can just see in the exam uh, the, on the patient now, and to the tip of the little condyle. That is the length of the arm. And second, when you want to assess the mid circumference of the arm, we mark a fixed point from the acromion down or lateral epicondyle up. And then we mark just measure at that area. It cannot be a random measurement. You measure at this side here and any side here. No. Mark a fixed point from the bony prominence. Okay. That you will just see in the video after this PPT is done. The measurements and at last as we said the special test. These are some of the mentioned special tests which signifies particular problem. For example, painful arc syndrome is related to supraspinatus and subacromial bursitis. Drop arm test complete tear of the rotator cuff, palsy of deltoid. What we do in drop arm test? You ask the patient to, you know, elevate. You help him. Go here like this. And once you leave it, it will just fall down. That is drop arm test. He is not able to hold it. Okay. Third, lift off test. Subscapularis, which is our PGME question also. Test for infraspinatus and teres minor is just ask to the patient to go for external rotation like this. Examiner, keep his hand on the outer side. Just little resistance. So, this is for external rotation. Apprehension test can be done for any joint. It is for dislocations basically. Okay. For any kind, not for all joints, basically for all dislocations of any of the joint. Circumduction, just to see if the patient is having a disability or no. Ask the patient to make a big circle. Okay. Big circle of the shoulder. Right. Dropping test is for infraspinatus instability. And the Hawkins Kennedy test is for impingement. You will just see in the video. Okay. These are special tests. As I said at last, do not forget to comment on the skin, any post-operative scar, any sinus, any discharge, anything abnormal, discoloration, anything that you can see, right? So when you talk about the shoulder examination on the inspection findings, what all you can see right now? First of all, I can see that my patient is keeping both the limbs parallel to each other on the side of the body, right? As such, what you can call the adducted state, not an abduction or adduction deformities, but normally adducted state, like it is not like this, okay? Contour of both the sides seems to be okay. So, contour will be disturbed in which conditions? We have discussed that already. So, contour disturbance is seen in the anterior and the inferior dislocations. In posterior, it can still be maintained. Isn't it? That is one. So, contour and attitude of the shoulder. Second would be if I see any kind of swelling on any side? No. Any kind of muscle wasting do I see on any side? Doesn't seem to me like that. So, again the same thing that any kind of muscle wasting has to always be tested at a particular fixed point from a fixed bony, uh, uh, what you can say the bony prominence, any of the bony prominence. You measure a particular measurement from a bony prominence, let's say 10 centimeter apart from it and then you measure the bulk of the muscle. How to do it? We'll just see. Okay. The muscle wasting, if there is any kind of, when you talk of the palpations, we know that in the palpation we have to confirm the findings of the inspection. So if there is any kind of deformity, swelling, sinus, scar mark, any operative scar, anything that you find, you'll have to comment on it. Okay. So, just check for the local temperature, seems fine on both the sides, it is almost equal on both the sides. Then the tenderness, how to assess for the tenderness? Tenderness will be assessed, you start from the anterior side. Okay, how we have to start it? 
you start it integrally from the sternoclavicular joint this one sternum and clavicle start feeling the sternoclavicular joint the clavicle keep on moving over the clavicle when you finish on the clavicle you move on to which joint the acromioclavicular joint okay from the acromioclavicular joint you move on to the back side that is spine of the scapula so you can feel the whole of the spine of scapula along with the whole of the scapula on the back side so you have started from anterior side move on to the lateral side ac joint spine of scapula and on the back the whole of the scapula okay then from the neck area you can start tenderness checking for the tenderness any kind of muscular tenderness and you can go down here in the supraspinatus region anything if you can find okay that will be tenderness so lateral uh, lateral side do we see anything that will be appreciable when i move down on palpation i can see sometimes a depression which will be suggestive of what the sulcus sign seen in which kind of dislocation the inferior dislocation okay then on the posterior side comment on anything that you find any swelling any edema any sinus any scar anything any problem that you can see in the patient right then second step would be to ask the patient to check for the movements at the shoulder area we can broadly have three sets of movements what are three sets of movements we can have at the shoulder flexion and extension abduction and adduction external and internal rotation so six movements at the shoulder okay so when you talk about the shoulder let me just show you the all the movements first of all when the patient is sitting over here okay so this adducted state from this adducted states when we move the shoulder here this is abduction of the shoulder and you must remember all the muscles which are involved in initiation and the progression of the abduction 0 to 15 15 to 90 and beyond that that we have already discussed in our theoretical part that is adduction and abduction second would be flexion and extension so remember that the flexion and extension is done in the plane of scapula so flexion would be like this forward flexion we call it forward flexion that is flexion of shoulder and that will be extension of the shoulder going back so flexion and extension and for the rotation of the shoulder what we do we flex the elbow so we will be using this forearm as a pointer so neutral position right focus here not here okay so this is a neutral position for shoulder so when i move my pointer when i move my forearm like this it is my external rotation at the shoulder when i move my forearm internally it is internal rotation at the shoulder so external rotation and internal rotation right these are three sets of movements which i can see at a shoulder joint okay so now when we talk about the measurements how to do them we feel for like i traveled from this clavicle to the tip okay so this is my this is my lateral most point of the clavicle so what i do i mark a point over here that is my acromioclavicular joint so you can see that cross one second i'll be feeling for the lateral condyle here okay i'll just flex the elbow and i'll feel for the lateral condyle this one so that is my lateral condyle so that is my actual length of the arm how to measure it from the tip from the acromioclavicular joint from the tip of the clavicle to the lateral epicondyle see this so i'll measure it the length of the arm is coming almost almost as 34 cm that is the length of the arm as i said when you want to check for the muscle wasting from this particular point let me just measure at 20 cm so i'll just mark a point at 20 and i'll just check the muscle bulk here so muscle bulk should always be compared on both the sides at a fixed point so when i compare it it is almost almost around 31 cm okay so at the same point i'll measure on the other side also this is to check for the muscle wasting right so length of the arm and muscle wasting these two important things are to be checked length of the axillary fold if you want to see so you'll have to ask the patient to just elevate it and this is the length of anterior axillary fold and similarly on the back side which is practically we don't measure it. so two important things here tip to the lateral epicondyle as well as the second one the girth or the muscle wasting basically okay these are two important things in measurement now i am trying to show you two most important tests often asked in your pgm examination number one is the painful arc syndrome what exactly is that we ask the patient to elevate the limb abduct the shoulder how dheere dheere hath ko upar uthao so when there is a painful arc syndrome the patient will start complaining of pain starting from this area almost 60 degrees of abduction and then it will be all painful all painful on painful and around 120 degrees the pain will be gone and now it is again painless so pain during this range from here till here this was all what you call painful arc syndrome the pathologies of which we have already discussed in the soft tissue conditions right the supraspinatus bursitis tendinitis calcification partial tears 
or the fracture of greater trochanter, the tuberosity and the subacromial bursitis. So these are different reasons what can cause the pain when the patient is doing 60 to 120 degrees of abduction. Okay. Now turn around. So second test which is often asked in your examination is about the supraspinatus when they ask you that this test, lift off test. So what we do, what the patient has gone through now, that is what you call the terminal internal rotation. Internal rotation like this, isn't it? The pointer, internal rotation and going back, terminal internal rotation, that's what he is doing right now. So this is assisted by your subscapularis. So when you ask the patient to keep the hand over here, examiner will be keeping the hand on patient's hand and ask the patient to elevate the hand. So when the patient is doing it against the resistance, if it is an injury or pathology related to subscapularis, patient won't be able to elevate it. This is what you call lift of test.